Uh, while the media howls from the sidelines, today President Trump urged Democrats, get over their anger, come to the table. Watch this. They were very, un very unhappy with the Mueller report. No collusion, no obstruction, no nothing. They're very unhappy. They're angry about it. They have to get over their anger. They have to get over... Wait a minute. They have to get over their anger, and they have to get into infrastructure, drug prices, and things like that. Joining us now is Trump 2020 National Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany, California Congressman Tom McClintock, and Republican strategist Brad Blakeman. We thank you all for, for being here. Kaylee, I'm going to start with you because I just have to giggle when they think they're getting under the, the, the skin of Donald Trump. Are you kidding me? I think Donald Trump actually kind of relishes in these kinds of, uh, of, these kind of skirmishes. Uh, but what's your take on it? You're, you're exactly right, Jason. It's so funny to watch that uh, record-breaking times that someone could say under President Trump's skin. It's as if the Democratic National Committee just emailed the talking points. They all printed them out and echoed them, which is exactly likely what happened. Here, it's quite the opposite, though. President Trump gets under Nancy Pelosi's skin. He gets under the Democrats' skin. Mueller got under their skin when he completely exonerated the president. They are totally triggered. That's why you hear impeachment. That's why you hear their bogus conspiracy theories. He, meanwhile, achieves at the fastest pace since Ronald Reagan, or faster than Ronald Reagan, if you read Heritage Foundation. So this president continues to succeed. He gets under Nancy Pelosi's skin. It's incredible to watch. No, and Brad, look, the Democrats are painting themselves in the corner, right? They keep doing things. I don't know how they get out of these cul-de-sacs that they put themselves in, but how are Democrats going to play this, and how are, do you see this moving forward? They're going to overplay it, just like they did with the Mueller report. Remember, they asked for a special counsel. They got one. And then they said, we believe in Mueller and we'll accept his findings. They don't. And now they're continuing on this delusion in order to uh, create a, a, a atmosphere by which they can take the president down. It's not enough to be against Trump. You have to beat him at the polls, and you can't because you're not running on a record. Donald Trump has a record. It frustrates them to no end. So it's not them getting under the skin of Donald Trump. They are consumed by the fact that Donald Trump has been successful in spite of their efforts to get rid of him. Now, Tom McClintock and I served in the Congress together. I think we were elected, actually, at the same time. Uh, you, you're braver than I am to continue to, to sit there in the face of it. You're also a, a congressman from California, so you're very familiar with Nancy Pelosi. I, I still, I, you go on the floor of the House and try to listen to Nancy Pelosi and what she's doing. But what's your read on what is she doing and how is it that she's taking the positions that she is? Well, I, I love that term, under his skin. He's the most thick-skinned politician I've ever met. Uh, uh, he's got the skin of an armadillo, so I think they flatter themselves if they think they're getting under his skin. I, I, I think, you know, I, one of two things is going on. Uh, either this is vintage uh, Trump dealsmanship. Of, uh, it reminds me of the uh, scene from Patton where Patton's ranting and raving at, at, at the headquarters and one of his adjutants pulls him aside and says, General, you know, sometimes the men don't know when you're acting. And George C. Scott playing Patton says, uh, it's not important that the men know. It's important that I know. <laughs> so that might be what's going on. Or it may be just pure human nature. Of, uh, it's, it, you, you can't amicably cooperate with somebody who's trying to destroy you at the same time. And if that's the case, then Nancy Pelosi's got a pretty simple choice. She can either have a political or a policy victory uh, by getting together on something like infrastructure, or she can keep nursing her political grievances, but she can't do both. No, I think that's right. And Kaylee, this is the problem, right? Nancy Pelosi has a meeting about impeachment, an impromptu meeting, then goes out and accuses the president uh, of violating the law and then expects to sit down with him in the next hour. I mean, I think it's human nature to do what, uh, human, what uh, Donald Trump did. Oh, there's no doubt about it. This was a charade. Someone who wants to in earnest negotiate and engage in bipartisanship does not do any of the things that you just named. And likewise, if she wanted to move forward with infrastructure, there was supposed to be another meeting where Democrats laid out exactly what they wanted and how they wanted to spend this money. Well, Nancy Pelosi canceled it. We've seen it on every issue. Immigration, when President Trump proposed yeah. a DACA fix in exchange for the wall, they dismissed it. We see it time after time. They're not earnest about this. It's politics. They want impeachment and they want to disenfranchise the American people. No, and, and Brad, uh, 
I got to tell you, uh, it, it seems like Donald Trump should actually be winning awards for his openness and transparency. <laughs> uh, and yet the Democrats are claiming there's a cover up. It's like when Donald Trump does something, they claim the exact opposite. And it's so absurd their position to say that he's covering something up when he was about as open as he possibly could in allowing all this access to the special prosecutor, correct? Correct. And not only that, but he instructed Attorney General Barr now to go through uh, literally thousands of documents on uh, that are classified in order to have further transparency on how this all got started. And the Democrats are beside themselves because they never thought that the president would respond the way he did. Now we're going to find out exactly what was behind the dossier how it was gathered, the information, and including more information about the, the treachery that was happening at the senior leadership of the FBI. So my, my caution to Democrats is be, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, Congressman, I've only got 30 seconds here or so, but Adam Schiff is saying that what the president did is un-American. What's your read on it? No, I think it's, it's absolutely American. Uh, Louis Brandeis said it best, uh, uh, sunlight is the best of disinfectants. Mm -hmm. It is now becoming clear that we had the embryo of a police state growing in our intelligence agencies, uh, in our law enforcement agencies, and at the IRS. Uh, 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 IRS preying on ordinary Americans because of their political beliefs and the intelligence agencies and the Department of Justice at the highest levels, uh, misusing their powers, uh, first to intervene in our national election, and when they failed to do that, uh, to undermine the constitutionally elected president of the United States. And we have to get to the bottom of it. Congressman McClintock, one of the great, uh, great people serving our country in Washington, D.C. We thank you for the service. And Kaylee and Brad, thank you again for joining us uh, on this beautiful Friday thank night. Thank you.